Hi guys, welcome to another video. This time I'm going to show you the very first roll that I finished after the first lockdown in my Leica. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about what it's like for photographers like me who are risk group. So this video is probably not going to be as calming as you're used to from me by now, but it's going to be interesting nonetheless, I think, at least if you're interested in what it's like for us risk group people out there. I'm a little uncomfortable talking about this subject because I have a tendency to rant <laughs> about all the decisions that are being made right now, since they're not really in favor of people like me. You might think that all these decisions that they're taking are all to protect people like me, but in reality it's by now in many countries the opposite. So what do I mean by that? Well, we had a very strict first lockdown and that was great, that was really the best thing to do at the time. And it would be still great right now, but they have decided that profit is more important for them, so they're not doing any lockdowns anymore here. We haven't had a lockdown since the first one, and the numbers have been out of control for six months now, which is a very long time. So the first lockdown was very strict here. They didn't allow even for walks. We were just supposed to stay home and that's it. And then after a while, people were also supposed to go to work. No fun, just staying inside. And if you didn't have a good reason to be outside, then you couldn't go outside. You would get fines and you could even end up in jail. And in my case, being a photographer and not part of the press, I didn't have a good reason to go outside. So I didn't for exactly two months. That's a very long time to be stuck inside completely, but I felt somewhat safe and it was fine like that. And I was in favor of the lockdown. And I'm still in favor of lockdowns now because they actually work. When they first opened up, one could only go outside at certain times of the day, depending on the age group. And in my case, or in our case uh, more specifically, it was already in the evening. So the first time I went outside after the lockdown ended was when it was already dark and everyone had been cooped up inside for two months. And everyone was outside, basically. Everyone was walking in the same direction, in the direction of the beach. And yeah, it was a bit crowded, I have to say. I had an FFP2 mask that didn't fit very well because I have a small face and they just don't fit me. So I have had a badly fitting mask that was supposed to be safer, but who knows if it doesn't fit well. I also had uh, difficulty breathing with that mask and the feeling that you get from these very effective masks, if you haven't really used them before, is that it restricts the breathing quite a bit. It feels a little bit like an oncoming panic attack, which turned out to be a problem later on. But not during this first outing. I was just out there with my mask. My glasses were steaming up like crazy. I couldn't see a thing. And there were all these people and everyone was getting way too close. Jesus. People come way too close. Huh? People come way too close. I understand. A majority of the people didn't wear masks at the time because there weren't many, they were still expensive and most people were just not that bothered, I suppose. What that meant for me was that I had to be very careful to stay away from people <laughs> because they were not wearing masks and my mask wasn't fitting particularly well. And then at the horizon, at the beach, there was this thunderstorm going on. It all had this weird post-apocalyptic feel. It was scary, I have to say. For someone who has two autoimmune disorders and not such high chances of survival if they get it, it just seemed crazy. Weird situation. So I thought, okay, next time maybe um, the way to go is to avoid where all the crowds are going. 
and uh, not not go to the beach but wander the streets a bit and we waited for that until it was possible to go out during the day so they changed the times a bit and we could go out during the day but the mask even though i had stapled it by then so that it fit better it still didn't fit particularly well and i didn't see much at all <laughs> there was always fog in some places it's like there were pockets of humidity in the air around here and in some places i just couldn't see very well and as soon as i put the camera in front of me it fogs up because i'm left eye dominant so like this this would be okay but it's just not my good eye and without my glasses i'm pretty much blind <laughs> i mean if they if people are close enough i can tell whether they're wearing a mask if they're further away not so much and if i can tell whether they're wearing masks they're probably already too close so <laughs> Um, that's a bit of a problem. <laughs> what would you like to do? There's people there. Lots of them. There was also the problem, how am I supposed to take pictures of people when I'm supposed to stay away from them? That makes street photography a little bit difficult. <laughs> so, very quickly I realized that maybe that was not the right way to take pictures for me at this moment. And I'm certainly not the person who uses a telephoto lens for street photography, I, like my lens is wide. So, no street photography for me then, I decided. So what am I going to do with that, I thought. Hmm. And at that point we couldn't yet go into the forest because there was a restriction of how far away from your home you could go. And the forest would be a bit outside of the radius that was allowed. So that was not an option yet. So after that, I racked my brain. What, what am I going to do next? I had already tried the self-portraits at home during lockdown and if you haven't seen that video yet, I will link it up here. And I had tried the street photography, which was <laughs> not working. <laughs> Frankly, no, it wasn't working. Uh, even though I got one shot that I really liked, all of that didn't feel very safe and it wasn't really an option. So I thought maybe I could try going outside when everyone else is already settling down for bed, maybe? And the problem with that is that the GoPro doesn't really have a very good stabilization at night. It works great during the day, but at night it's just a shaky mess. So I decided to buy a GoPro gimbal for that purpose. It's something that you can mount on top of the camera, like I normally just mount the GoPro directly on the camera, I can mount this particular gimbal on the camera itself. And it works really well. I was impressed with it. 
so I thought maybe I could take some night pictures because I always like taking night pictures too and I thought it would be a good experiment to see whether that would work out for me. Change her roll? No, no. I didn't even take another one. Okay. Hey, you might be lost now, Jasper. What's this problem? Hmm? I saw another mask. You saw another mask? Yeah. So, generally speaking, this was a bit of a better experience. I could stay away from people a lot because there weren't that many. The bars were still open at the time and we were avoiding those, but apart from that it was quite possible to avoid people even though not everyone was wearing masks yet and we didn't have a general mask order yet. It, it was possible. The problem was that if you don't really see much because of all the, the fogging up of the glasses you're still walking through some nightmarish darkness of fog. It, I didn't really feel comfortable with that either. And then there was also the issue that I usually couldn't take off the mask whenever I needed to, because there might be people around. And if at that moment it felt like the restricted breathing was more like a panic attack that was oncoming, then I couldn't take it off. and. That was bad because in the end, after we got back home, I actually had a proper panic attack after that because my breathing was restricted for such a long time. So trying to stay safe with safer masks definitely bad backfired there. In the end, my solution was to just use cloth masks. I bought some online that look quite nice and I thought being outside it should be fine as long as I stay away from people. And around that time they also introduced a general mask mandate, so I felt okay as long as other people are wearing the masks, I'm okay with a cotton mask myself. It's just people without masks who are a problem, or people who don't wear them properly. Well, those are a lot, but you get my drift. And then later on, I also managed to get a mask that was months later. They brought out masks that they newly developed, which have antiviral textiles involved and those are very effective. Uh, there are even some that are certified and I got one of those and they work quite well and I can breathe better with them. And I also put in a little bit of padding at the around here and uh, that means that the glasses don't fog up as much. It's not perfect and I'm still trying around, also with anti-fogging agent, it's like a spray that you put on the glasses and that could help too, but I haven't properly tried it out yet and all of that made it workable. 
the best option for me is still to go to a place where there are not many people, like for example the woods. And that's what we did after that was possible again. And yeah, I thought in the woods I felt the safest and even though a lot of people don't wear masks in the woods and I understand why, it's really not such a big deal to just pull up your mask whenever you're crossing someone. But apparently people don't want to do that and even the government said that in the forest you don't have to wear masks so I had no place where I could be safe. <laughs> but yeah generally even though we had to sometimes uh, half crawl into the underbrush <laughs> to get away from people it this worked out fine until the tourists arrived. And the tourists were walking around in big groups and uh, not keeping distances and looking at us like we're some sort of strange wild animals when we were scattering into the underbrush. <laughs> but generally, in the forest it was workable. And that's where I filmed a lot of videos that you are gonna see in the next few weeks and months because that's really the best place for me at the moment to film and take pictures and so on. Now I tried to stay safe and when the tourists brought us the second wave, yes that happened and I predicted it. There's a whole Twitter thread of my predictions of how this second wave is gonna go and I was spot on except that I thought that there would be another lockdown and this just didn't happen. Our government apparently, after the first lockdown was a bit too costly, decided that people like me are expendable and profit is more important. So yeah, no lockdowns anymore. And I was kind of hoping that this second wave would be over fairly quickly, but since the measures were to just sometimes close the bars, and even then people were moping, it just didn't go away. And all in all, for the last six months, the numbers were fluctuating between high risk and very high risk and extreme risk. The EU even invented a whole new category of bad numbers for us, specifically for places like ours, where the incidence is somewhere above 500. It's a bit annoying, <laughs> frankly, to be in this constant high-risk situation, uh, especially for people like me. But our government apparently decided that this is the way to go now and they're just playing ping-pong now with opening the bars. The numbers get too bad so they close the bars and then the numbers get a little bit better and then they open the bars again and they get out of control again. And then when there was a bit of a dip they call the wave over and suddenly start calling the second wave the third wave and yeah that's not it's not working but n nobody really cares so that's just what they do now and people like me are just supposed to be shielding indefinitely if we can afford it and most people can't so I'm in the lucky position that I can shield indefinitely and that I can continue my lockdown for a very long time because my husband works from home but a lot of people are not in that lucky situation and they have to go to work and they have to send their kids to school which are not closing so what are they supposed to do? Risk their lives I suppose. It's just if the government risks your life and you don't have any other choice, then you're expendable for profit. And that's not really what you're supposed to do in civilized countries. But well, that's just me and my opinions about the lockdown. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys don't agree with me because lockdowns suck. But you know what? If we had early strict lockdowns, we probably wouldn't have to have any longer ones that suck so much. 
the no COVID, zero COVID strategy works and the Chinese are proving it every single day. But in these civilized countries, these so-called civilized countries that we're living in, instead we are letting people die for profit. And people tell us that we are supposed to learn to live with the new reality. Only not for people like me, it means that we're supposed to accept that we're gonna die. And it makes me very angry. So I tend to rant about these things, and argue with people, even though I know that it's not working, that I can't convince people, because they all have their own selfish reasons for thinking that people like me are expendable. My husband says that these people are not in the majority, and maybe he's right, maybe he's not right, I really don't know. But to me, it sometimes feels like they are in the majority, and that's not particularly good for my mental health either. And that's something I'm struggling with. A lot of you people are probably going to agree with me too, and I don't want to start a big discussion or anything that's not the intention here. Anyway, this was a bit of a different video from me. Very opinionated, I suppose, and probably not everyone will agree with me, and that's fine. But I think I just had to say this out loud at least once so that I don't explode from all the rage that I have in me about all these bad decisions that governments are taking now that are risking people's lives and especially my life. I guess it's something I had to do for my mental health so that I can stop being sad and that's just it. Now, if this video was in any way useful to you, giving you tips as to how to stay safe, or giving you interesting insights into what it's like for us risk group people, then please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It really helps out the channel, so I would appreciate it. You can also support me on Ko-fi if you want to support what I do on this channel. You can expect no videos like this one. <laughs> I'm probably not going to make a video like this again. But you can expect many more photography videos. In the next ones you will see me in the woods and I'm going to be staying safe and sane and away from people and taking pictures of landscapes. I will try to make them as calming as possible for all you people out there who are stuck in lockdown again because your government decided wrongly two months ago and i'm gonna make calming videos for those of us who are indefinitely in lockdown i will probably have to take some risks for that at some point and i'm gonna try my very best to stay safe and still bring you videos sometimes it depends on the decisions that our governments make but i will try my very best so if you're into that sort of thing i would be happy to have you here and I hope I see you soon for another video. Bye. Ooh la la. Okay. You have to remove the sound because it's me going ooh la la and it's not going to be very cool.